What's up YouTube? Thanks for tuning back into the channel. Today we are reaching the finale of the Duramax build. That's right guys, over the last couple of weeks you guys have been great sports in tuning into my videos and following along with this amazing build. We've had quite a few little bumps along the way, but it's turned out absolutely amazing. And tonight is the night that we're gonna be doing the final things. We're gonna be getting, uh, going through our last pieces. I'm gonna be showing you guys what I've been doing, getting things into the truck, kind of trying to rush this thing in and just hurry up and get it done so we can get out of the shop. Make sure you stay tuned. We'll go through this now. So in some ways I've been putting this off, but in other ways I've just been, you know, kind of biding my time, waiting for the last couple of really key pieces to this big puzzle. We've been waiting on our trans to get done and gone through, and we've been waiting on our Y-bridge intake and other uh, inlet accoutrement for the air side of things. So tonight we're going to go through these things. Let's see what we got for our air inlet stuff. So the company I decided to go with was none other than HSP. As you guys can see, we ended up getting their full performance package for the LBZ Duramax. We've got the hot side, we've got the cold side, we got the Y bridge uh, that comes with a couple little extra pipes and stuff for the reroute on your PCV system. And then we've got the I like more than anything is that HSP actually uses, you know, their own form of air box. I don't really like the the way the WC Fab kind of just puts everything still into the warm engine bay. HSP kind of blocks that off and we've got our own little nice decorated HSP cap for that box. It comes with the horn that goes onto the turbocharger. It also comes with your hot side, cold side pipes, all the fancy boots, clamps and everything to go with it. And let's step over here to the Duramax where I have actually taken some time to install their Y bridge. Now that is another big key feature to why I ended up going with this kit was their design of Y bridge isn't like, you know, everybody else's. Uh, a couple other ones, they come straight across and then coming up right from here. A couple of other ones uh, put the two piece section right up in here. I've seen those kind of be more of a pain in the butt, but HSP does have a two piece design that has a flat flange that puts a mounting nut here and then right here on this other side. So you can get your Y bridge into place. And as you can see, there's a nice V flow pattern for a lot better airflow into your two different sides of the engine. Uh, very nice inlet piece here. And then the actual studs and nuts that hold the neck portion up into the motor. So we got that one all put in. We got some new coolant pipes, as uh, you guys have seen, I snapped those off. I still kind of need to get the ones off from up there, but I'll get there, you know, when we get this cab back down. And then we've got our PCV system that we're kind of running here, kind of waiting to get that big old turb ski on before I reroute these right here for the, for the PCV system. Uh, I'll get those routed. As you can see, I got this side ran all the way up into the valve cover right y'all ran that one there and then we've got our transmission in the transmission that we ended up going with i actually got second hand from a guy who built this one or had it made for his pulling truck it is a ppe stage 4r transmission uh, now what that means is it does have the upgraded clutch packs the 7 and 7 i believe 14 in the c2 it does not have the billet hub but it does have the upgraded clutches, steels, and other internals to it. I ended up also taking his torque converter that he had with it. It was a Suncoast, I believe it was stalled to like 3600 RPM, which I really don't need something that high. I ended up sending it off to Suncoast where those guys who are absolutely amazing enough were able to restall it for me. They made it end up uh, putting it, I believe, to a GM 1074, which is about a 2100-2200 stall. 
full billet torque converter. So that is a badass Johnny. It's in there. Got our lines we ran here and our PPE brace that goes between the transmission and transfer case. Ended up getting that one in. Left it all nice and machined. I was contemplating on making that a little, you know, powder coated or color coating it, but I ended up clearing it because I really like the shiny stuff on there. Just like all my other fuel lines and everything up here, all shined up ready to go. As you guys know, when you're adding this much power, the Allisons, they can't handle quite that much. They usually max out at like 400, maybe 450-ish on the horsepower range before they start having a couple of issues with one of the sun gears, the secondary clutch packs in them, the C2s, uh, it just starts to come apart at that point. I took the transmission down to my buddy down at his shop and he went through a couple of the internals. Uh, let's check them out right here. As you can see, he did all of the checking around with the clutch packs. He ended up checking to make sure all of them were spaced out and the shims were all shimmed correctly for that. He looked through the different uh, stators and the hubs. Everything checked out just fine, except for this one thrust washer. This one thrust washer looked like it had been uh, pushed through a little bit, and when they did the rebuild, they probably forgot to replace this one. So we did find a replacement for that one. Uh, we ended up putting all new seals on the front hub for the pump, and then look through the pump here. The pump looked absolutely fantastic, and then we put a whole bunch of trans gel in it. That initializes it, helps it work out for the initial priming of the pump, get the pressure worked in a lot faster, helps it pull the fluid up into the filter assembly a whole lot easier. All in all, trans look really good. We got it all back together, put some new filters in it just in case. Got the bell housing switched over because the bell housing was actually for an LMM this being an LBZ, they do have a different bell housing uh, with a different speed sensor adapter up on top. So we got those swapped out and we got them into the truck and this thing is gonna be shifting freaking amazing. I'm excited for that just as much as the motor work. So trans is in, harness is on, lines are ran. Now we're gonna get that big old turbo up in there so we can route our engine harness and get this truck rocking and rolling. peeps well it's been a long night here in the shop let's uh, go through a couple of things sorry I haven't really done a whole lot of video here on the step-by-step -step kind of stuff but you know taking it apart putting it back together you know it's kind of the same thing but you know there's just a whole lot of stuff and I'm trying to get this done on a time frame so here's what we got done for this evening before we get back into it tomorrow all right the other harness is just kind of setting there we got our vehicle harness fully ran all the way across we got the turbo installed all of our coolant lines installed uh, we got our breather the mouthpiece that goes into the turbo the the uh, Y bridge that was all put in a little bit ago and then we got our exhaust all kind of mounted up and put into place we ended up going with a PPE downpipe a big thing for you guys to think about if you guys do end up going with performance manifolds and the different up pipes just keep in mind that this shit is going to be tight like stupid stupid tight even with this thing with the cab off this stuff really doesn't want to fit really well it's got this Kevlar kind of blanket thing around it and it still is kind of you know sitting up against it here. I don't think it's gonna have too much vibration issues, especially with uh, this nice little covering on it. And then the trans dipstick is kinda touching it also. We might end up doing a driver's side trans dipstick change here in the future, but uh, we'll see what we can do for that. Kinda got it routed the best I can. Make sure you guys get the uh, up pipes torqued correctly because I had an exhaust leak before when I did my other ones, when I had put these on prior to this project, they need to be torqued down to 39 foot pounds. Make sure you guys get that one right. So 
only thing I've got to do in the morning is uh, the PCV for the other side for the other valve cover. I need to route that one over. Let's have a look over here. This harness was fun to run, but we got this side all done, put back together. All of the harness put in where it needs to. Fuel lines all tightened down and rechecked. All of our glow plugs and everything. The harness all hooked up down there. And then the up pipe and stuff on this side. Only thing that uh, I kind of flubbed up was the one coolant pipe that goes onto the turbo itself. My dumb butt forgot to put that on ahead of time. So kind of had to take some stuff back apart to be able to put that one on. Lost myself about an hour's worth there, but that happens. So yeah, that's what we got done. I'm gonna go home, go to bed, but with the magic of YouTube, you guys are gonna click here through to the next screen and you're gonna wake up and see me doing more stuff. So on to the next day. Look at that, cab's back on. It's only been a couple of hours, um, we're gonna say five because going back together, it's always a little bit more finicky than it is taking it apart because you're just ripping shit apart. But look at that pretty shit. stuff is pretty freaking awesome everything went together really nicely uh, we've just uh, finished up buttoning up the last of the little coolant hoses filling it with fluid and we're hooking the scan tool up now to be able to crank this thing over build oil pressure before we actually start it you want to do that and then once we actually go to start it after we've verified that we do have oil pressure everywhere then we're going to be letting it idle for no less than 15 minutes to allow the turbo to break in correctly get oil to all the different little areas that it actually needs to go so we're going to get this thing started up uh go through the cranking first and then start it you guys will get to hear it absolutely first right as i do Was that some cool shit or what? Everything went together just perfectly. We got everything put back together. Check the alignment again. We had it up off the rack for like a month. So just wanted to make sure everything went through just fine. All runs out fantastically. Other than I still need to get the tune adjusted. So when we took it out for a test drive, we realized the tune with all this extra fuel and the 60 over injectors that we got are like crazy overworking it on the low end rpm but boy this turbo sound for ryan's performance diesel is just oh man it's the bee's knees i i'm gonna do a separate video on just the turbo sounds with this four inch straight exhaust it's absolutely fantastic i do have a clip here to show you guys exactly what it sounds like and how dirty this tune is right now And here is what the engine bay looks like right now with all the goodies all put together. All the HSP goodies here are making this thing shine fantastically. The PPE dual fueler popping through. This thing looks absolutely amazing. I am beyond amazed at how great this thing came together and how it looks. I'm actually able to put my hood up at shows now. And again, I wanted to give a big shout out to all the sponsors for all the parts that I did here, get here on the channel for this one. The biggest one being the Ryan's Performance 68 millimeter Performance Race Turbo. Now, like I said, I'm gonna be doing some more great videos on this one with the sound. I'm gonna be putting this thing on the dyno to get it properly tuned here this next week. So that, and we'll get some roller shots of it going down the road just to show you guys how amazing it sounds as well. Big shout out to the guys over at Bitterroot D who gave us uh, the injector rebuild for the Duramax. It, they turned out great as well. They are something that I, I'm looking forward to getting the full abilities to be able to see them, how they work on an awesome tune. Right now they're 
they're they're working almost too well I put the injector balance codes in and still we've got too much so need some fine-tuning with it that's absolutely awesome shout out to the guys over at HSP diesel for making an amazing product with the air intake parts the Y bridge and all the conjoining piping hot side and cold side to go along with it that stuff just looks absolutely phenomenal it came in a great amount of time the customer service was great when they were a little bit behind on their actual order fulfillment they told me a date they stuck to it they kept their word and I commend them for that one so everything being back together I am one of the happiest guys on the planet so I'm gonna be ripping through the gears on this one uh, absolutely loving and living life Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this build so far. I've got quite a few more things in stock. Uh, I've got the uh, tuning coming up here in the next couple, uh, in the next week or so. I'm gonna be taking it over to Day's Diesel Performance over in Germantown, Ohio. So they're gonna be putting it onto the dyno and putting a proper tune on it. So we're gonna get some adjustments, some horsepower numbers. We're gonna be able to see it at its uh, full abilities and get this thing out to stretch its legs here a little bit, see what it can actually do. If you like this video and videos like it, make sure you hit that thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to the channel as well because I come out with new awesome content like this all of the time. We've got our Nifty Tools of the Week videos coming out weekly just about. We've got some more really awesome things coming here really shortly in the way of tools. We've got a new tool sponsor that we're going to be working with and I see amazing things coming with that as well. Now don't forget, June 22nd, if you guys are able to make it up to Wisconsin, over to Ryan's Performance Diesel, they are putting on a massive truck show. Truckmaster and Dalton over at Bertrand 850, their YouTube channels, they are putting this giant truck show on. They've got a couple of hundred trucks. Gonna have dyno days there. They've got a dyno that's gonna be on site. If you guys are able to, make sure you go over to Ryan's Performance Diesel over on their Facebook page. You can get a hold of their phone number where you can schedule for a dyno know a spot there it's a hundred bucks there's only a couple spots left so if you guys are interested in that one make sure you sign up for that one we're gonna be heading down there we'll definitely be down there on Friday before that so the 21st we'll be there having a little show at uh, Ryan's performance diesel at their actual shop and then the next day is over at the Memorial Parkway the uh, link and everything I will put down in the description below to Ryan's diesel service as well as truck masters channel where he goes into much more detail about everything that's going on for that truck show. Hopefully, I'll see you guys there. Thank you guys for tuning in today. I appreciate it. And as always, you guys stay awesome.